as you can see, the tower, Alan Tolner, has joined us on the podcast. It's true. We it's lied to it's you true. earlier. We said that he was not going to join us and that he would be in the next episode. Psych. He's just going to be we the lied. next segment. Seg Mint. Did he fake yourself? <laughs> I'm here, people. He's here. He's here. Bask so, in my radiance. <laughs> so um, before we, before we uh, cut... Uh, prematurely there, we uh, we had Rocco kind of go into his topic. So, <clears throat> Rocco, why don't you tell us what you got? Okay. Um, so, my topic is the power of thought. Um, and where I'm going to go with that one is just the uh, – I'm um, – now, everybody has the right to their own opinion, and I always agree with that. Mine is that out of my experiences in life, law of attraction has been a real thing. And to go – I'm going to go real quick. Sorry. He just got attracted to something on the floor. <laughs> Squirrel. And had to grab it. Like, Case in point, and, uh, right there. He's gone. <laughs> okay, so for for a quick one, um, there was a study back in 1979 uh, with with Harvard graduates, and uh, they all there was out of. Um, let me get through this one real quick. Eighty five percent of them didn't write any goals or have any goals in mind at all. 10% of them had, no, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, oh, oh, oh. No, 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 I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do this right because only 3% had the goals written down. Uh, and we're at what, 95, 10, 2, 12% had, um, r- had remembered goals but didn't write any goals down. And the last 3% wrote, wrote their goals, had goals and wrote those goals down and read them daily. After 10 years of being out there in the world, making money and, and living life, they went back and asked those graduates about you know, their experiences. The, the 12% that had the goals in their mind were making, tw- I'm sorry, twice more than the rest of the 85% below them. The 3% were making three times more than the 97% below them and had more happiness. And they asked, why is that possible? And I think personally because they consistently were reading their goals every day. They were giving themselves the steps that they needed to be able to achieve the dreams that they wanted. And it gave them the focus that they needed. For a lot of us, we're caught up in this day-to-day life that's like scattered. We're on our phones, Facebook, video games. Our, our TVs and our movies are like half a second. And it's go, 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 go. And I feel like everybody's on Riddle and they need something. So... With that being said, it's it's easy to see how people would believe that perhaps we don't have control with our thoughts because, I mean, why would we? When our thoughts are all over the place, we would expect to have chaos if, if that was the truth. But when you learn to kind of focus your thoughts and not be so connected to things like, you know, uh, the Facebook. So if you take your app off for a week, imagine what your life is going to be like with that. What kind of chaos would your mind go through just for that you know a lot of people say do things like meditation and whatnot but if you can learn to create your mind into like a a uh let's let's say like a um, a laser beam instead then it could be easier to attract and manifest things in your life and i started to to practice that in my life mm-hmm. and and out of that i started to attract I, I got to say that I am one of the most grateful men in the world because of my family that I have, the children that I have, the wife that I had, the life that I live. I love everything that I have in my life. And I feel, though, that I attracted all that. It wasn't just luck. People could sit around me and say, wow, you're a lucky man. But they don't know what was happening with me subjectively. Subjectively, I was maturing and growing as a human being that I, was, I personally felt I was attracting all those experiences to me in life because I was ready for those. Now let me open up the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying and, you're basically uh, saying like you 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 saw something, you saw your goals, and you went after it. Like people thought you were right. lucky, but it was really just fun. it was a lot of hard work, and right, it was a lot right. of dedication to something that you kind of focused on and just didn't ex- stop until you ex- got it. Exactly. So coming out of college, I said I you know I entered into the business world, so I started educating myself on successful businessmen. I'm like, okay, if I'm going to do this. I want to do it right. Why be the guy that's the average guy just doing it? I want to do. I want to. I want to learn from the best. So I started learning a lot. You know, from a lot of. You know, like I was holding up before, I was attracting, like Alan was saying, you know, different books like Psycho Cybernetics from Maxwell Maltz. You know, a happy pocket full of money, creating on purpose. There's obviously you got. Steve's got a book right there. What is selling. <laughs> 
Exactly. The happy pocket full of money. That's one specifically about the law of attraction and understanding your relationship with the, the, your, your, your belief of money itself. Because a lot of us were raised with the mentality of uh, money is a bad thing. Yeah. Um, that people money, with money is a bad it, thing. Money is a human-made item. Like exactly. Something that we all make a, I guess, uh, a it. value nice. on it. Yeah, thank you. Right. And a lot of us, though, I feel like from the mentality that we, we had came from and were raised from was that this idea that money was hard to come by. It required so much effort and all this wildness and, and only, you know, certain people were, were, you know, were able to achieve it and receive it. And, uh, and if you did, you're, you're, a lot of those people were bad. And it's like we created these subconscious beliefs in relationships with money that I think affects us. And that book that Stephen was just holding up, was it speaks about that. So there's, changing there's a lot I want to unpack there. Uh, yeah, I will. I will start. I guess at the top, and I'll work my way down. Feel free to interrupt me. <laughs> I'm sure we'll go on tangents, but I have a lot yeah, of thoughts yeah. on that. Um, gotcha. So yeah, money. Money can definitely. Like, and my first thought is that uh, when I was growing up, there was a lot of emphasis on money. There's a lot of emphasis on gifts, right? Yeah. But like one thing I want to sh- like kind of think about or like throw that out there, if Rocco, you're starting to think about for Christmas gifts, right? Is like the idea of like. Maybe it's not just a straight up gift that you're getting. Maybe it's more of an experience, right? Because that's oh, just yeah. as valuable as a man made oh, yeah. piece of paper, right? So if oh, the whole yeah. family goes out and experiences like a new country or a new like mm-hmm. kind of area, like that is really cool, right? It's not it doesn't just boil down to, to just money or just I, a gift or a material kind of I agree well, with you. I, I, uh, I agree. actually to expand on that, my mom, uh, from now on, all she does is build us us gifts. Uh, like she built a a, uh, a coat rack. Every my mom has been uh, actually uh, decorating my whole house for the past three years. <laughs> she doesn't even know it. So she built uh, like little like little things, nothing crazy. So she only spends a few bucks on it, but she built like a coat rack, um, things that are functional. You know, mm-hmm. I hang all my hats on there because I like hats, and uh, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. The, and that, that's cool too, because that's more memorable for you. you totally, know I mean? yeah. That's how. I, yeah, that's what I, I think. Because then you have like a connection that's like not just like oh, that's that thing my mom gave me. It's like oh, this thing my mom built for me. Like right. you know, she put her hard work into it, like her time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so absolutely. there's more of a connection it, to it. Yeah. It's more and meaningful. I was. Ha- I was having a conversation with somebody the other day. I can't. I can't. Oh, uh, uh, this Jewish doctor. Uh, he was saying something about giving, and um, and I don't know about you guys, but whenever I give. I feel like now two people are feeling good. That person I just gave to you receiving is like, yes, I just got something. And, and me giving feels great too as well. You know, so like going to your guys' point about, oh my gosh, where was I going on tangent there? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was going to something with Ian there and I totally lost track because I looked over at Alan. <laughs> I looked over at Alan too, and his eyes were like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> so the other thing, Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> so the other thing I was gonna say was that um, was so okay. So when I hear the the word like law of attractiveness, right? Does that are you talking about things that you can potentially get addicted to too? That could like kind of bring you off your path? Is that something? Oh, absolutely. That- I mean, I, it, this is what I think. I think that. That power kind of thing, it has no idea of like right or wrong. It doesn't give a shit. It just thinks whatever's on your mind consistently, you're going to get. So, for example, I don't have a Ford. I didn't, before I owned my Ford Fusion, um, I was thinking a lot about buying a Ford Fusion. And before I was thinking about buying a Ford Fusion, I never saw them on the road. I drive to Atlanta every day, so I see a million cars. Yeah. But when I started thinking about buying a Ford Fusion, it started coming to my mind. I was really thinking about it. I think they're affordable. I think they're good. I like Sorry, it. Sorry, Rocco. Hang on. Do you, are, do you work for Ford? <laughs> <laughs> they're, reliable. <laughs> they're reliable. Ford, 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 Ford. They have, they have five speeds. <laughs> yes. No. They have not. He drove an Explorer most of his life. I start yes, thinking yes. about it, and then all of a sudden, you know, I start seeing Ford ex- you know, Fusions all over the place. I buy one, and then I feel like I'm seeing them every time I'm driving, I'm seeing them everywhere. So I'm going, you know, that's just like an example of law of attraction and how it can be used. Maybe not in the way that I was intending, but it's still like a, a being applied. So it changes my filter, essentially. My, my mind is focusing on Ford Fusions. So now my filter sees in the world around me all the Ford Fusions. They were always there, 
I just didn't ever pay attention to any of them because my mind wasn't attracted to it. Like, and then when I started changing it, I started actually seeing all the Ford Fusions all over the place. So isn't isn't this like isn't this like existentialism, right? Like, isn't that like the right like you like you think it and it will happen, or am I getting that confused? Like, is that not? That's true? essentially you know Maybe the case wrong. now. Does does it apply to things like you know is it going to be like miracle changer and all this and that? I'm not sure. What I can say though is that even when it comes to quantum physics and science, they have to do double blind tests because they've they've noticed that I'm, even on a like a quantum scale, they affect the outcome of the experiment. The thought and that, that's it's like the thought of what they anticipate the outcome of that experiment is going to be affects it. Wow. Uh, and and that means that they have to do double blind experiments to make sure that they're that they're not affecting the experiment, you know, in any way. Which to me says, well, we've got some power. What what is it? You know, I don't know. Uh, have I have applied it in my life, and I've realized, okay, I've, I'm starting to now see after years of thinking this process, how it really is starting to feel like a truth for me, at least. Like I said, every, I respect everybody's opinions. Huh. So, uh, by uh, for focus. <laughs> so basically. <laughs> Go out there. Ford Fusion. If you think about a Ford Fusion <laughs> oh, long Fusion. enough, I'm sorry. Fusion. you will get one. If you want to, if you want to catch anything from this, it's basically be a really, really good gatekeeper and make sure you are always conscious of what's coming into your mind and what's not, because that's very, very important if you believe this law of attraction belief. Be, so, I if you're driving down the road, I think, I think I think you're absolutely right to 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 put a different spin on it. I guess like to not so sound so like woo woo or whatever yeah, like, yeah, we, yeah. we apply the same practice at my job which is in the sense of OKRs which are objective quantifiable results um, and or oh, I'm sorry objective key results and so it's it's basically every six months you sit down with your mentor and you and you basically jet uh, uh, jot out the next six months of goals and they're supposed to be small and they're supposed yeah. to be like somewhat obtainable but somewhat a little bit reaching like you shouldn't be able to get 100% of them. You should be able to get maybe 90, 85% of them, 80% of them. Uh, and it's a way for you to kind of envision what you need to work on next to improve or move up. And that allows you to kind of like strive for something and remember like, right. oh yeah, this is what I need to do. This is what I need to work on, right? And like I think right. that keeps someone focused. That keeps someone right. with a direction to go out every day and kind of just like work towards. And then you have these mini like kind of four week, six week check-ins about, okay, hey, you have the six month like goal. How are we doing? How are we like executing against right. that? Like, right. and I think it's extremely powerful. And we had these guys called Happy Brain Science. I think you guys can look them up. Uh, and they've kind of come to us with this this idea, and they've expanded upon it and like how we can improve. And it was really really fascinating. And I've seen the culture change for the better. People are improving on things that they're that are weak against, right? So, right. It's really yeah. I gotcha. I gotcha. No, I think so it's I believe like, it. I like that's the way. That's why we're you're talking about with the goals and stuff, and the in the in the first part about the Harvard's goals. Goals are very important. Yeah. Because if like if everything that I was just stating, you know, let's just today, let's just say it, it is a truth, then it would be very important to make sure that the things you want to achieve in life, your goals, your dreams, yeah. you're consistently thinking about on a daily basis, or or just often, often enough that you said, you know, you're checking in every week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, whatever it is, just to make sure. Am I doing something to achieve that? You know, I know I want to have a million dollars, but am I actually doing any? Now, don't believe, don't take it as I just think it a million dollars is going to just appear. No, no, no. I think Rocker, there has the to be action. action. Yeah, <laughs> there the has to be there, some you action. Think about it, you get the you, put, you think about a million dollars. Bullshit, just, man. If you think you about a million dollars enough, and you want it enough, you're gonna maybe start allowing yourself to open those doors, to opportunities where you can start making steps towards that. Right. Like maybe you get a job out of a sudden or you meet a guy that helps you get this or that and da da da, da yeah. whatever it be, you know, it's just not a million dollars pops in your bank account. Right. <laughs> I mean that's like it's, like all sports players, right? Like they have the same exactly. mentality, right? It's always like visualize yep. the win, visualize like the championship, visualize this and like somehow that instills an ability for you in your actual play that you like yep. play more competitive or you play like at the top of your game. And I think that's yeah, that definitely like people in the sports world, professional sports world world 
uh, subscribe to that idea as well. Ab- absolutely, and that that's from this right here, the Maxwell Maltz, you know, Psycho Cybernetics that talks about which how- you can get at Amazon for nine ninety nine. And this is the crazy thing, and now, now this is just one, this is just one more point. Okay, so it's like it's like that that thing Rod that they say. Ford Focus. <laughs> it's it's like that's what I said. Like Ford Fusion is great. You have your McDonald's. <laughs> big, uh, Wendy's chicken nuggets right here in the top corner. Here. Here. Nine, nine, we have spot food okay. here. <laughs> one so day, what? Ian. So. So what research shows is that your brain doesn't know the difference between an actual experience or what goes on in your imagination. It can't tell the difference. It all fires exactly the same. Well, so with that being said, what you just <laughs> said, they will do that. They will go inside their head and they will do that imagination of that shot over and over and over for a golfer or for a, you know, a basketball player, just over and over that three point over and over in their right, head. Right. And what they found out is that, you know, for people that did, you know, practiced it, they got, you know, just as equal as the people that imagined it compared to the people that didn't do either or. It's like, so it's very powerful because the brain, like I said, can't differentiate between a real experience or the imagination. Well, it's like, just so. like, try this right now, but let's just stick with me. Um, close your guys' eyes. No, okay. <laughs> the last time we did this, <laughs> Steve, we are that. doing that. This, is, this <laughs> sounds <laughs> like a who's in my mouth game. I don't like those yeah. things. <laughs> Well, it's like I would just say, close your eyes and imagine like biting into a lemon. Oh your yeah, mouth exactly. To water oh up. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right. Yeah. You can't differentiate whatever. Right. Yeah. You're saying your mind can't. It, it's almost like the real thing. Right. Exactly. So like that's a perfect example. Like you can do it right now if you want to. Like I said, close your eyes, but you guys don't want to do that. <laughs> 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 I trust. I mean, it's over Skype, but yeah. yeah no, like, no, it's. Do that. It's a perfect example, you know, the, the lemon example. You There's, know, you know you close your eyes, you imagine it, you start to feel these sensations going on, all this stuff that starts to happen. Your your brain can't just you know, decide what is real, what is not real. There's another and that and use it to your advantage. Why not? There's another experiment that Alan, I think you actually will appreciate all of you appreciate, but it's a soccer example. Uh, or sorry, football example. Ooh. <laughs> so I think <laughs> what's up? Or global? <laughs> it, <laughs> Anyway, it's, it basically, it, um, there was like two camps, and I believe, man, I'm probably going to butcher this. I'm going to do my best. Basically, there was Sweden and, and German camps, right, where they played, uh, they played football. And German rules with more of a fear mentality, where it was like, they would, the coach would come up to the players and be like, listen, if you screw this up, we're fucked. We're not going to get to the, you know, the World Cup. Everybody in the whole country is going to laugh at you and screw this up. This is when they're doing like kicks, right, when they're trying right, to like, yeah. get the final kick. And then they went over to the Sweden camp. And they noticed that in Sweden, it's more of like, listen, like, imagine how cool it would be if we won this. Like, think yeah, about yeah. all the great, like, positive, like, stuff that would happen. Everybody would love you. Mm-hmm. And, like, there's, like, it's – and it's not to say that one is better than the other, but it was basically – it was an experiment that proved out that people are different. And some people respond to fear in a positive way that, like, helps motivate them. And some, like, respond more to, a, like, a little bit more of a gentler kind of, uh, kind right. of motivation. Right, right. Uh, and it was an exercise and basically telling us, like, as managers, like, how we should approach our, right. our people under us. Like, we need yeah. to find out how they respond and what they like. Because you can't just use, like, one tool for every single person that you work with, exactly. right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so, like, it was just like, listen, does the person like being told bluntly, like, you're fucking up, don't screw up, yeah. and, like, do this better? Or are they more of a kind of person that's like, listen, hey, you had a bad day. It's okay. But imagine what right. happens if we can bounce back from this. They, you would be awesome. Everybody, the whole team would be happy and you, and you did this. Like, it was right. a really like, interesting kind of like in the same type of vein that Rocco you're talking about and like a way of like helping guide someone's focus and thought process. Yeah. Forward, right? And I know what you're talking about with the management thing too. I'm sorry. Uh, the Dale Carnegie leadership course actually speaks about the same exact thing. You know, having, you know, the mentality of that bad manager that's angry and having that manager that tries to coach you up. Like, be, what, if you're that manager that, you know, uh, that that manages in fear, that, that, that person doesn't try to excel or do anything outside of the, the box. They only try to do the minimum work. Yeah. But if you're that manager that sits back and watches for, say, a week and doesn't look at all the bad things but looks for that one good thing that they do and then goes out there and encourages them on that good thing and then helps show them the way that you want, you watch people flourish like yeah. because well, yeah. you give them an option, you know? 
But I think what Clay was saying also is that like some people that that manager that does is like a hard ass and like kind of rules with fear. Like he'll work for some of the people, like some of the employees, because they'll be like yeah, working so hard true. to impress him the one time, right? I like gotcha. the, yeah. they'll work so hard because like I think like a lot of uh, from what I understand, like a lot of uh, like chef schools, especially uh, like French cuisine. Most of the like stereotype is that all the uh, chefs are like hard asses, right? Yeah, like they, like yeah. it's like it's like a living hell working in the kitchen or whatever. And a lot of them like pass that on into like <laughs> you know following like their their students or whatever. And so like when they own their own restaurant, they like rule with like an iron fist or something like that. Yeah. And what I'm yeah, thinking about it right now is ratatouille because of that. So. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> hey, so one totally. last point, real quick on this topic too. If anybody doesn't have any other questions, is uh, maybe use this mentality for your gaming experiences that you guys have. Maybe the next like, time you get into that gaming, you know, dude, think next about, time you hey, guys fuck up a game. Gonna win that time you fuck up a game, man. <laughs> I'm just gonna rule with an iron fist. Be like, yo. <laughs> Steve, that was fucking trash. Rango was terrible. Like, why don't you just why don't you just quit oh, yeah. now? You're off the team, <laughs> uninstalled. Yeah, I hate you. It's already, oh, it's already uninstalled. <laughs>